I just finished through hiking the Great Divide Trail, an extremely wild, remote, and technical trail where I experienced everything from extreme cold to extreme heat, rain, snow, cliffs, and even a bear attack. And over the 1,100 kilometers and 37 days that I was on trail, I really put all the gear that I brought with me through its paces. And today I wanna to share with you what worked, what didn't work, and what the MVP of the trip was. Starting with the pack, this is the Mountain Smith Zerk 40 pack, and I don't think I could have picked a better pack for the trail. The big differentiator with this pack is on the front here. So it doesn't have a traditional hip belt, so you don't have the big wraparound hip belt, and I love that because it allowed my hips to be a little bit more free, and it was great for just having a good stride, as well as there's some technical scrambles where not having the hip belt pockets allowed me to get a little bit closer to some cliffs and sketchy areas, which was better for my center of gravity, as well as it has these running vest style shoulder straps, which really took a lot of the load off of my traps and spread the weight over my entire chest. Even when I had over 30 pounds in this pack with an eight day food carry, it was very comfortable for me. And as we kind of unpack all the gear in it, you'll see that it also worked really well for me from a gear organization standpoint. Starting with the water bottle pockets, as most people do, I just store those right on the side here. I used the same two smart water bottles the entire trip and the lids did not break on me at all. A little hack is that you mark the opposite side of the hinge with permanent marker and that, and that allows you to always flip in the right spot and you're not gonna get any weird torque on that hinge and they're gonna last for years that way. And then in my other side pocket, I keep my bear spray. So this was essential because while I was on the trail, I did get charged by a grizzly bear. It got within six feet of me and I sprayed it right in the face with the bear spray and it, that might have saved my life. And then the Zerk 40 has these really awesome side stretchy pockets on the outside of the kind of main water bottle pockets here. And in those, I just keep snacks and other little things like that. On the front of the pack, we have the shoulder straps and each shoulder strap has two mesh, big mesh pockets. Right up front here, I'd keep, I kept my water filter. So I switched out from a Bee Free after the first week because the Bee Free just died on me. And I switched it out for the Platypus Quick Draw Water Filter. This thing worked really well for me for about 200 liters before the trip. And I probably filtered another 100 to 200 liters while on trail, never clogged up and has really good flow. And then in my shoulder strap, I think it gave a lot of you anxiety when I was out on the trail. I also kept my spoon. I never lost it, stayed right there, but I'd eat sometimes my breakfast in the morning as I was hiking. So it was nice to have the spoon there, just grab it, eat my oatmeal. As well on this, on the second strap here, I kept, kept some more accessories for uh, hygiene. I had SPF lip chap and uh, sunscreen. Sunscreen I put on my face all the time, every single morning right after I ate breakfast or after I brushed my teeth. And that brings me to the other thing I kept in there. I kept my toothpaste tabs. So toothpaste tabs, an awesome thing if you're through hiking because you can take just the amount that you need. You don't need to be guessing on how much, how many days you have left in your little toothpaste tube. And then I lost, I lost my toothbrush filtering water on the first day of the last section. So I just added this little toothbrush in there just to represent the toothbrush that I didn't have. I had to brush my teeth with my finger. On the other side here, we got one of the most important pieces of gear for safety. That's my Garmin InReach. I use the Mini just because it's smaller, lighter, and I'd get about two days of very heavy use out of this before I need to charge it. But because it has such a tiny battery, it charged very quickly and did not uh, require a ton of battery bank capacities. I was able to check in often as well as text my girlfriend. As well down in here, I kept earbuds. So some of you kind of chirp me for bringing earbuds on the trail, but if you're hiking for 37 days straight, you have kilometers of road walking, and you're by yourself like I was the entire trip, earbuds, earbuds are nice to listen to some music or a podcast. For those of you who are wondering, this is the Comperdell camera staff. The really nice thing about it is that it has a eighth inch thick bolt on the top that you can screw on camera accessories. So this was an awesome piece of gear. And the nice thing about them too is I was using a tent that required a really tall trekking pole. And this one goes up really tall because it's a, technically a staff and not a trekking pole. So it worked out really well for me. On the top of the pack, I kept a couple things here. So first up is this 1 8 inch thick foam pad. So this is 20 inches by 40 inches. And I used this as a sit pad when it was all folded up. And I'd also lay it out and then take naps on it, or I'd put it underneath my pillow in order to raise my pillow up. I could also put it underneath my sleeping pad to add some warmth. It actually added a surprising amount of warmth on those really cold nights. And then something that I 
I don't know, Steph thinks that these are ridiculous. They look really funny, but they're one of my favorite pieces of gear. And these are ultralight sandals made by Mayfly. So these things are super lightweight. I think they're like 30 grams and they're everything that I needed out of a camp shoe. So I would wash my feet every single night and that's what kind of got me into getting these was I could slip these on after washing my feet and not have to put my foot into my really stinky, stinky trail running shoes and then my feet were allowed to breathe a little bit more as well. They're also durable enough that I could walk around town with them and they, yeah, just all around great sandals. I picked them up from Garage Growing Gear who's the sponsor of today's video. So thank you Garage Growing Gear. They're my go-to backpacking store with super quick shipping of in-stock items which made it really easy to grab these sandals in the middle of a through hike. They're continually adding awesome backpacking gear to their inventory and when I got back from my through hike I realized that they now carry the majority of the gear that I carried on my trip including the Zerk 40 pack, my Ursac bear bag, my Tokes titanium pot as well as my go-to sweater. And you can check out the description of this video for links to all the garage growing gear as well as every piece of gear that I'm talking about today. If you watch my trip videos you might have noticed that I often had my underwear or socks hanging off the back of my pack and that's because I'd wash my my underwear and socks every night and then dry them out on the back so I used Injinji toe socks we'll talk about my clothing a little bit later there but Injinji toe socks were uh, my socks of choice always hanging off the back and then my front pouch here I carried a whole bunch of items including my ditty bag and in the ditty bag it this thing could hold a ton of stuff including my wall charger so I use this to charge my devices in town this is a spigeon wall charger with USB-C connectors and 30 watts of 30 watts or maybe 40 watts of power it was a very fast charger and very small and lightweight all my cables for the trip so not a ton of cables but enough to charge everything that I needed my Nightcore NU25 headlamp I did end up night hiking and this thing performed really really well it's also very lightweight USB chargeable which I don't think I'd ever get a headlamp again that's not USB chargeable and then for my battery banks I carried two Nightcore NB10,000 battery banks for the majority of the trip. These things performed very well and were everything that I need. Even for eight days, these would have lasted me, but I also added an NB5000 just as a little bit of insurance while I was filming. And I didn't really need this, but it's also an awesome little charger. These battery banks are not cheap, but they work very well. They're very efficient and they're the most lightweight option on the market. So if that's a priority for you, then these are definitely the way to go. For the majority of the trail, I used Frog Togs rain gear and it worked phenomenally through rain, snow. It did everything I needed it to do. The problem with Frog Togs is that it's not very durable. And for the last part of the trail, it started getting very cold and I was gonna be bashing through a ton of willows and shrubs. So I wanted something a little bit more durable, thicker and warmer. And for that, I picked up this North Face rain jacket, which worked really well. No rips, no nothing after a lot of willow whacking. <laughs> I'm the Willow Stopper! And then I also picked up the corresponding pants. So these worked very well. My pants probably were taking the brunt of the bushwhacking, but they did not get any rips and held up very well. So very happy with the rain gear that I picked up, both the North Face rain gear as well as the Frog Togs. Some of you are gonna still question the Frog Togs choice, but let me tell you, I did not wanna be carrying twice as much weight in rain gear for the first three quarters of the trip. So the Frog Togs did their job. As well in here, I have my poop kit with this awesome Space Bear Bags poop emoji bag. This thing is phenomenal. Makes me smile every morning. Good way to start the day. And then in here, I kept uh, hand sanitizer, wet wipes, toilet paper, and then also my trowels. So this is the Vargo Dig Dig Trowel. It has serrated edges. And a lot of the Great Divide Trail is super rooty. And I was able to just cut through those roots and dig really, really good cat holes. I was super proud of my cat holes. And this was why I was able to do that. It's very comfortable in the hand as well. If you're looking for a trowel and you're sick and tired of uncomfortable trowels or ones that just don't dig good holes, then definitely check out the Vargo Dig Dig Trowel. I have my first aid kit here as well with another awesome Space Bear bags. I'll post a link in the description with a link to everything that I carry in my first aid kit. I don't wanna go through it, but I didn't really use it. I didn't get any blisters. I didn't really have any injuries that needed taken care of other than shin splints, which I use some ibuprofen for. And then what else do I got in here? All right, so I have a snack left over from the trip and my rain mitts. So these are the Outdoor Research Helium rain mitts and these are not waterproof. They're super lightweight, but they were not waterproof for me. The nice thing about them is that they kept my hands warm and that's all I really need them to do. I also brought this 
DCF dog bowl, or I like to look at as a wash basin from Bean Campin. And what I used this for was washing my feet or clothing if I wanted to use soap with it. So I had powdered soap from Pika Outdoors. Powdered soap's the way to go. Definitely check them out. And then I also have a Swedish cloth hyper absorbent, I think it absorbed 40 times as much water as it weighs. And I use this to wash myself as well as wipe down the condensation from inside my tent and on the outside. And because my tent was single walled, it was very easy to wipe the inside and get all that moisture out. So I wasn't carrying around a lot of water weight with my tent, as well as when I went to set up my tent in the evenings, I didn't have a whole bunch of moisture already in the tent. Now we can jump into the inside for the, the big exciting items. Starting off with my tent stakes, I kept them in this All Man's Right holster stake sack. This thing's awesome because it has a really wide opening at the top. And then I used ground MSR groundhog stakes. So I used the regular size MSR groundhog stakes for three parts of my tent and then I used the minis for other ones and these things were awesome. I was smacking these with tons of rocks and they did not bend and they held the tent in place really, really well. And then for my tent, I used the Z-Pax Ultiplex. It's a one person single wall tent made out of DCF and DCF is an amazing material because it doesn't absorb any moisture and doesn't stretch when wet like nylon and polyester do. So I never had any stretching in my tent. It held up to wind, rain, everything that I could throw at it. And then because it doesn't absorb any moisture, I was just able to wipe it down with that cloth in the morning and get rid of all the moisture that was inside the tent and any sort of water that accumulated on the outside. Underneath my tent, I packed my food. So this is, this is exactly how I packed my pack every single day. So if you're interested in that information, then just take note. I used an Ursac bear bag and I'd go tie this away from camp and I didn't like hang it off a tree. With the Ursac, I just tie it to a limb of a tree. Bears have been known to chew through trees up to six inches. So I just try and make sure that it was bigger than that. This is my cook kit. So I used a Toke 650 milliliter titanium pot. This is the ultralight version. And in here I have my BRS 3000 stove. Great little stove did everything I need. I was just boiling water and putting it into freeze dried meals. So this worked very, very well for that. Mini Bic lighter and then my fuel can. So all that fits in here and it's a nice little compact cook system, which I really, really liked and it worked very well for me. And then next up, all of my dry clothes, everything that I wanted to keep dry, I stored in a Nilo Fume pack liner. So this is just a watertight pack liner that once I put all the dry stuff in, I twist it up and then tuck that into the side. And I had many, many days of rain on trail and nothing on the inside of that Nilo fume liner got wet. Right at the top here, I have all of my clothing from the trip. So we have my decathlon fleece pants, awesome fleece pants, very lightweight, very warm. The, yeah, it got very cold on the Great Divide Trail. So I needed all of this gear. And this is my Farpoint Alpha Direct sweater. Super warm sweater, also very lightweight. Great for keeping you warm around camp, especially if you just put a windproof layer over top of it. This thing is awesome. And then in Jasper, my last town stop of the trip, I picked up polyester long johns and long sleeve shirt in order to keep a little bit warm. I used the long sleeve shirt while I was hiking. We have it right here and it kept me a little bit warm on those days where I'm hiking through rain and sub-zero temperatures. And then I also wore the pants when it got a little bit colder on my legs while I was sleeping at night. And then we'll pull out all the little things starting with my merino wool toque. So I'd wear this at night on my head and then it was long enough that I could pull it down over my eyes in order to keep the sun out if it was a sunny morning. I added these gloves in Jasper, the last town stop as well, just to keep my hands warm in case well while I was hiking and for add my buff as well. So I put this on over top of my toque and hat and then I could pull it up over my face and it basically made a little balaclava between my toque and that worked very well. Uh, I started off the trail with these darn tough socks as my sleeping socks, just lightweight socks. They were great and I could also use them for hiking because they're so thin if I needed to. But then it got really cold and I ended up picking these thicker, thicker socks up from Smart Wool and they kept my feet nice and warm later in the trip. I had this decathlon merino wool t-shirt which was awesome, great when it was hotter out but also then super warm um, when it was a little bit cooler later in the trip. And my key piece of clothing insulation and that is my puffy jacket and this is the Enlightened Equipment Torrid Apex. 
This was essential. It's a very, very warm jacket, also made with synthetic material, so it doesn't react as poorly to moisture in wet environments, which I did have on the Great Divide Trail quite a bit. Moving on to my sleep system. This, this, is, a, this is an important one because it was very essential to have a good sleep system on the Great Divide Trail. This is the Thermrest X-Lite sleeping pad. The reason why I went for it was that it's very warm and then also very lightweight. It's not the most comfortable sleeping pad on the market, but there's nothing that beats how warm it is and then it's weight as well. So I was willing to sacrifice a little bit of comfort for something that kept me very warm and was also lightweight. For my pillow, no surprise, this is the Trekology 2.0 pillow. I really like the Hike Encher pillow as well, but the Trekology is a little bit lighter. And I, I re-fell in love with the Trekology pillow on the Great Divide Trail, I think. And then for my sleep insulation, we have my quilt. So this is the Enlightened Equipment Enigma quilt. I got it in the super lightweight version with seven denier face fabric and shell fabric and then 950 power fill down. This thing kept me warm for sure, especially when it was drier. The problem is that down does get affected by moisture. So when there was a lot of condensation, there was the colder nights that are very humid, it did absorb some moisture and lose some of its insulation. Luckily I had enough other layers to keep me warm. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about my hiking clothing, which was essential for having a successful through hike and also includes my MVP item. So I wore a long sleeve shirt and pants. This is the Outdoor Research Sun Hoodie. It has a hood to pr protect my ears and neck from the sun, which was really important because the beginning of the trail was really, really sunny. With the long pants and long sleeves, I was able to bash through willows and off trail without scratching up my arms and legs, which was essential. And then the other thing is that because it was so wet, I needed something quick drying. So the long pants and shirt dried quickly after they got wet. For a watch, I used the Garmin Phoenix 6 Pro Solar. The key point with this is that I use it for navigation on trail. So I uploaded each day's route onto it and then I was able to follow that over the course of the day, which was really well needed. A lot of the Great Divide Trail does not have an established trail. So you're just route finding, doing cross country route finding and the watch was really good for that. The MVP or MVPs of the trip was footwear. I'm gonna treat footwear as an entire system because I think everything worked together in order to keep my feet comfortable, blister free and pain free. I averaged 37 kilometers a day on the Great Divide Trail over some pretty crazy terrain. So I, I wanted my footwear to be dialed in and it ended up performing beyond expectation. So I already mentioned I use the Injinji toe socks for, on my feet. So these are the lightweight versions made of synthetic material. So the lightweight versions dried very quickly, wicked moisture away from my feet and did not hold on to a lot of moisture. And even when my feet were going through streams and rain, every single day for three days straight, I never got a blister. And then for my shoes, I used the Hoka One One Speed Goats, Speed Goat 4s, and these things were phenomenal. They have a ton of cushion, so when I'm putting in those big mileage days, they cushion my feet and allowed them to keep, keep moving and not get plantar fasciitis and not get any sort of foot pain. They have a little bit of a wider toe box than traditional shoes, which was great for my feet because I do have a slightly above average width to my foot and they held up great durability wise. I put over a thousand miles on three different pairs of Speed Goat so far. This is the pair that I used for the last half of the Great Divide Trail. So they have around six to 700 kilometers on them and they're still holding up great. Some of, the, some of them had issues with the heel kind of lifting up a little bit, but a little bit of super glue just nailed those down very well. There's still a lot of life in these actually. I'm gonna be using Speed Goats pretty much always for longer trips from now on. I like to train my feet with barefoot or minimalist shoes when I'm going on shorter things, but then when I'm doing a big mission, then I want something like the Speed Goat. And they, they were very sticky on slippery rocks and yeah, just an all around great shoe. And then inside of them, I put super feet carbon insoles. And I think these were also super helpful for me because they added a little bit of arch support that I needed on those big days and were just very durable. So super happy with this footwear combination and definitely the MVP of the trip. I've received a ton of comments from you guys telling me that my Great Divide Trail through hike videos was the best through hiking video series that you've ever seen on YouTube. So I really appreciate those comments. That means a lot to me. And if you haven't seen those videos, then go check out the compilation video that I'll put right up in the corner there. It goes through the entire trip day by day with chapters and it's an epic and insane trip. Like I said, I get charged by a grizzly bear hunt it and it's a once in a lifetime trip that I'm never gonna forget.